my apologies, and I can only beg for your attention. The first question I'm going to ask you is, what were you doing in late February 2020? That's the first question I have for you. I remember it quite clearly. I was in Delhi. I um, I'd just gone to visit the oldest bauli, which is like a urani there, and that was inside a landfill. And on the way back, I was in the airport. This was February 2022. I'm oh, sorry, uh, February 22nd, uh, 2020. The airport was packed, okay? There was not a mask in sight. I think there were three of us wearing masks on that day. And uh, there were rumors that, you know, uh, Wuhan had shut down because there was a virus, but it was contained there. Some people were talking it had gone to Italy, but it seemed a problem that was very far away affecting someone else. The world was clueless and unprepared for what came next. Because a month later, India shut down. Schools shut down, colleges shut down, factories shut down, offices shut down. You know, we were all uh, shut. And in my factory, I remember the absolute fear and bewilderment of my team. You know, when they came to me and said, what will happen to our lives? And what will happen to our jobs, our livelihoods? And uh, I, I remember that fear and, you know, having to move forward at that time. And uh, we all experimented. I mean, we shared, we, we figured out how to uh, move forward. Uh, masks became universal. A uh, little while later, the migrants started walking home. Then the months passed. Children, uh, many of your students who were lucky enough to be able to study online, began to learn from their homes. Factories like mine started working again. Doctors learned to treat the cases. Scientists began working on a vaccine. The trials for the vaccines began. And then the first wave came to India in October, September, October. Loved ones got sick. Every, you know, people, loved ones died. And it passed, right? Was India special? And then we all took off our masks and we moved on. And then in early 2021, the vaccine started rolling out and we were quite relaxed. And then in summer of 2021, the tsunami came, right? It was too fast and it was too steep to call it a wave. It was not a wave, it was a tsunami and loved ones died. Then that wave too ebbed away and we moved on and by you know, this year, when Omicron came, almost all of us are resilient. Even now, we're talking about a COVID wave going on. And, uh, but we're all, you know, we all are resilient. Either we've got the disease, so we have the immunity, or we've got the vaccine, so we have the immunity, so we are resilient. And I want you to remember that word. Why am I saying it? Because in the climate change crisis, in the global climate change crisis. The world is in the February 2020 of the COVID pandemic. We have no clue what is coming ahead, but there is a wave coming and there is a tsunami coming and we are as unprepared. Before we move forward, can I have the first video and hopefully the video works because what I'm going to show you is the temperature change over the last 140 years. So what you're seeing is the temperature change in the last 40 years. This is 1920s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and that's today. Okay, so we've warmed by about one degree. And when I teach this class in colleges, the first thing I get from students is one degree is not a lot. If you walk from there to there, it's more than a one degree change, right? And it's important because a sustained one degree changes the, water, the way the water cycle works. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, okay, great. So moving forward, what you're seeing here is how the tsunami may look and when it may come. This is, I'm assuming the average here is in the mid 40s. So this is how your life would look. 
When you were born, it wasn't warm at all, right? By the time uh, your child was born, it had warmed by about just less than a degree. By the time your child finishes uh, high school, it's warmed by a little more than a degree. By the time your first grandchild is born, okay, we are all hoping we are on the blue line where the temperature doesn't increase, but we are firmly in the middle of the red line. Okay? By the time your child retires, we are going to be in a world that looks nowhere similar to what we are living in today. And we really don't have a clue. Why I'm showing you this slide is that it's pretty important. Um, especially, a lot of you have heard about the COP process, the IPCC, the international meetings and all that. The sad truth is, despite all the pledges, we are going to be warming. And all of us in climate talk about carbon. I, how many of you have heard of net zero? Okay, about, I can't see, but there I see about five hands. But while people who talk of climate change talk of carbon, people, the climate itself talks through water. So what these two charts are, are the incidence of floods and uh, drought. And no, no better city to talk of it than Chennai. Which, is, which periodically swings between flood and drought. Uh, last December 29th, there was a flood in Mailapur because it was, in five hours, it rained 20 centimeters. In 2015, I mean, we all know about it. 2019, we all know about it. But look at the damages. It's like a pointed needle, okay? That is possessions that people have spent a lifetime in working and accumulating, that's just gone. And the only way that graph is going to move is up. So usually when I speak, I, I send out a questionnaire and I ask people what do they think of climate and sustainability, et cetera. If I'd known this was going to be the audience, I would have sent it here also. Um, so one of the questions I ask is, who in your opinion is going to be affected by climate change? And this is about 400 answers a lot from college students, but also from employees in a leading IT services firm. And what they said is the whole world will get ex uh, um, you know, affected. Everyone, everywhere, equally will get affected. The future generations will get affected the most. I want you to notice that you and your family is amongst the least, okay? So they think they're protected from climate change. It's somebody else's problem. That's not really true, okay? And that's something I really learned um, when I started digging into this problem. India is probably the most vulnerable country to climate change, and Tamil Nadu is one of the most vulnerable places within India uh, that is highly vulnerable to climate change. So, like COVID, not everybody is affected equally. The migrants who had to go home or the children who can't afford to learn online are left behind. Same way in countries, hot, dry, crowded, poor countries are left behind, and that's India. So what will happen as the warming increases, right? You're going to see more floods. Chennai, the Chennai floods of 2015 may become a lot more common, right? Uh, you're going to have um, more and more um, droughts every year. India's uh, food grows primarily in the Northwest. They themselves estimate that they may run out of groundwater in the next 20 years. So where will India get its food? That's a big question mark. But what really worries me is moist heat, right? Today we're all in an AC room, so it doesn't affect the people in this room. But what moist heat is, what happens when it heats up? What's the first thing you do? Yeah, you sweat. Because you, when you sweat, it evaporates and it cools your body down. But what if it's so humid that your sweat can't evaporate? Then your body can't cool down and you will die. And that's what is called dangerous moist heat waves. And uh, you know, they're re relatively uncommon now, but by, in the coming decades, these uh, dangerous moist heat waves are going to become far more common and large parts of our country are going to become unlivable for some part of the year. 
So, you know, um, in other words, the wave, that tsunami of climate change is very much up ahead of us and we've not prepared. You know, what really gets me is in adapting to climate change, in moving, because I think at some level everybody understands it has changed and we have to adapt. But what we haven't, like look around this room, it's fossil fuel run, it's, it's everywhere. We're going about life as usual. But in the next few decades, climate change is going to leave none of you untouched. What you eat, how you move, where you live, where you work, the air you breathe, the water you take for granted, everything will be touched by climate change. And I know I'm billed as a motivational speaker and I've not been motivating you enough. So let me sort of come to my own story, okay? And um, I knew nothing about climate change nine years ago. I, I, I led a corporate life, I ran a factory, I, I was quite comfortable. And then one day, just after we had our daughter, uh, we ran out of uh, water at home. And uh, we were spending obscene amounts of money transporting water to our house. And I had to take time off because I had just had a child. So I asked him, what's going on? You know, uh, we had no clue how, how we were using our water. We had no clue. We, so when we had to bring it down, we had no idea. So we put meters in and then slowly started understanding where, how, and why we were using our water. To cut a long story short, and I've gone through all this detail in many of the articles you can find online or in my book, um, we stopped buying water in about a year's time. This was in 2014. In 2017, the worst drought in 140 years came to Madurai. Okay, it was, it was horrible. The last time it was so dry was the time where five to 10 million people died in India. We've all forgotten about that famine, but that famine existed, the 1877 famine. That was the last time the drought was so bad. But in that 2017 famine, uh, drought, we were the only house in Madurai not to buy water. In that neighborhood, at least, we were the only house not to buy water. So the motivational part of it is, look, once you accept there is a problem, and once you start educating yourself there is a problem, it is a manageable problem. And that's really, like, in the first book and the second book, finding out people who have managed this are my vaccinations of hope, right? The, um, the man I met who has brought Levin Rivers back to life. I've learned from him and he's a strong vaccination of hope. There is a person um, in Bangalore who manages waste, right? So these rag pickers that you see in the landfill, I met one of them who was working for her and she said, uh, and I'm gonna say it in Tamil, Illa ma, I'm going engineering. And I'm going to She was, uh, she's a rag picker. She was separating waste, but because they'd given her uniforms and all of that, she could afford to send her child to college. And what I really liked after that is, which was nice to hear. Um, I was just telling Lakshmi earlier that, you know, uh, when I started in 2018, like when I started investing in 2015, once in two months, I'll get one startup in climate tech and I think it's a great two months. Last week, I saw seven, right? Uh, this space is exploding, and it's coming from you, students that you educate. So up to now, I have sort of said my spiel on climate change, but now I have a very clear ask. And this is going to, again, this is from the same survey. I asked two questions. Would you buy a green or more sustainable product? An overwhelming majority, 90% said yes, and they were willing to pay more for it. And I've done this survey over time, and what I find is people are willing, a greater proportion is willing to pay more for it. And this is especially important for the recruiters and the placement officers. 80% said they want to work for a green employer. And when you drill down into that data, that gap is only increasing. Right? And these are students who have a choice. I heard one of the 
uh, recruiter saying, it's a war for talent, right? And if you're not green, you're going to lose out on that talent, right? So climate change is really going to be shaping um, everything everywhere. And you know, again, ESG assets, it's a little bit of a, <laughs> it's a little disappointing right now, but I think we'll get there in the end. I think it's a very hot trend. So what is my ask from you? Okay, and I'm going to speak, investors speak, and I'm going to say, what, what do I want from this group of leaders in your thing? How many of you have a class on climate change? Introduction to climate change. I can't see. One. One. I'm saying it is the defining crisis, the most critical crisis in the next 100 years. I will take a bet with you that your next 20 years, you're going to live in a different world, right? You need to teach your children that. You need to teach your students that, right? Because then they can become the vaccines and the warriors to create the kind of companies that we need to move forward. Um, recently, I heard from someone else that uh, sustainability and climate change is going to be the next digital. So you all have IT now. But why can't India be a leader in this space and start early on climate change? Um, that anyway is my hope. I used to teach that class in college and um, it's really important because I think unless we understand a problem, you know, we, have no, we don't have a hope in hell of solving it. Thank you so much for inviting me.